Hare Krishna. So I'm going to share with you all a very beautiful story, which is, um, which will teach us the the role of a guru in our lives. So this story is a uh, is a um, it's almost like hilarious and at the same time very very deep. Uh, the stories of a guru who had a disciple who studied under him for many many years. After completing his education, this disciple um, moved out of the guru's ashram. He got married, settled down. Um, he had a wife and two children. Almost many many years passed from the time he passed out from the guru of this teacher, and. After many many years of passing out of the Guru, obviously now this uh, disciple got entangled into so many material things, and uh, he kind of forgot everything that he had learned in his Guru's ashram, especially the basic things. The Guru, when he was leaving the ashram, told him that no matter what, never forget the fact that you are an Atman, a spirit soul. And you are living in this body. This is the most important lesson of all the lessons I have taught you. This disciple said, "Yes, yes, yes. I will never forget." And he left. When he left from his guru's ashram, and of course he got into the regular life as I said, he was completely absorbed in it, and he didn't really focus on the guru's teachings. Many many years later, the guru decided to visit his disciple to find out how his disciple is doing. The guru came. Now, of course, this was like many years later, almost a thousand years later. So the guru's look and uh, how he is, uh, you know, how he was, is completely changed. And the disciple could not recognize his guru when his guru came. And this guru came disguised as a hungry beggar. So the disciple he said, "Please come, I will feed you." And he called him uh, home. And uh, he uh, he told this apparently seeming to be a beggar. He said, "Please sit here, and I'll feed you uh, some food." The beggar sir spoke up. He said, "No, I don't want any food. I want a specific type of food." Now, if you are you know wanting to feed a beggar, give some money to a beggar. You prefer if a beggar doesn't ask you anything, right? And if, you, if the beggar takes gratefully whatever you give. So this beggar was different. He said, "I want a specific type of food." So he asked the disciple, "Asked him, please tell me what can I give you?" The guru said, "He made a list of ten items: gulab jamuns and you know, uh, jeera rice and very very uh, special type of dal tadka and so many items he mentioned." The disciple was shocked. He said, "I have never seen a beggar asking such specific." Things and uh, but anyway, he has come here. He is a guest, so he said I should honor him. So the disciple told his wife, "Can you please call these items?" And the, the wife began to cook everything. And this guest was sitting there very quietly. After he was served his meal, he ate voraciously. He ate so much that nothing was left. After he finished eating, this disciple asked this guru of his. He didn't know it was a guru, but he asked him. So, how did you enjoy the meal? The guru looked at him and he asked him, "What meal? Who enjoyed?" The disciple said, "Just now you ate such a big meal. We cooked ten items for you, everything that you wanted. I am asking you, did you enjoy the meal?" The guru looked at the disciple and said, "Which meal are you talking about?" I didn't eat anything. The disciple was angry. He said, "What nonsense! I fed you so much. How can you say you didn't eat anything?" The guru said, "I didn't eat anything. This body ate, but I didn't eat." And the guru told, told, taught him the entire philosophy of how we are not the body, we are spirit, soul, all over again. And that's when the disciple realized, "This is my guru come back." And the disciple fell at the feet of the guru. And took shelter, and he said, "I'm sorry, I forgot your teachings. Now I'll remember it." The 
guru bless the disciple and went away after a thousand years the guru came back again to test his disciple at this time the disciple was standing in a procession there were thousands of people standing in the procession and there was a king's entourage coming the king was sitting on an elephant and all the citizens were looking at the king with folded hands and the king was glancing at everybody giving blessings to everybody and you know distributing profuse charity to everybody and in the middle of this whole scene the disciple was standing there watching this uh, king in great reverence the guru came and stood next to him behind him and the guru asked the disciple what is going on the disciple didn't recognize the guru again it was again a thousand years had passed you know so the guru told the disciple um sorry the disciple told the guru this is a procession of the king and the king is sitting on the elephant he is going in a procession and all the citizens are standing and uh, reverentially watching their king the guru asked the disciple who is the king and where is the elephant the disciple said can't you see here the fellow who is sitting on the elephant is a king and the, the 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 thing that is there below is the elephant the guru asked him which king which elephant which uh, citizens now this disciple got really wild he said what a stupid fellow he can't even understand basic things the disciple climbed on the guru's shoulder and he said the fellow who is sitting on top like me is a king and the fellow who is below is the elephant and all the people that are standing around are citizens the guru then realized that the disciple had completely forgotten the philosophy of atma and then he told the entire philosophy of the atma he said that the one that is sitting on top that you're saying he is not the king the one that is below he is not an elephant and all the people that are around are not citizens and then he explained how we are not the body we are spirit soul and went on in great detail explaining the atman and suddenly the disciple realized oh my god i again forgot my basic teachings and the guru has come all over again to teach me the story which is there in the upanishads is a very instructive story because it teaches us the role of a guru in our life the guru teaches us many important things and some of the things are so basic and foundational for our spiritual lives for the role of the guru doesn't end just by teaching it to us the guru not only teaches it to us but ensures that we remember it and not only ensures that we remember it in this life but he will come life after life to make sure that we remember it the role of the guru is an eternal role it's not that the, te- the guru teaches us once and that's all uh, the role of the guru is over in our life never the teacher and the student the guru and the disciple the role is an eternal role the nature of the disciple is to forget the nature of the guru is to teach again and therefore in the bhagavad gita we find krishna after teaching the entire gita to arjun speaking hundreds of shlokas to arjun at the end he tells arjun if you didn't remember don't understand anything If you want me to explain again, tell me. It is forbad to teach the Gita all over again. The nature of the teacher, the nature of a guru, is they don't give up. Our nature is that when we when we don't find someone reciprocating, someone understanding, someone able to assimilate, we feel very irritated, and we say, "What is this stupid fellow? Not really worth giving my time to." But the guru. heart is very soft and the heart of the guru is very compassionate the guru never gives up on us just like the paramatma never gives up on us no matter how much in a dirty uh, body we are in no matter how much in a filthy situation we are in paramatma is still there inside us similarly the guru no matter what our situation of life no matter what we end up doing in life the guru does not give up on us and we should not we should not think that our connection with the spiritual master is only for this lifetime but our connection with the spiritual master is for it till the time we reach the lotus feet of shri krishna the guru is going to be after us the guru is going to be really concerned about us 
and the guru is going to be really intensely trying to help us uh, on on this very auspicious week of guru purnima let us offer our respects to all the gurus in our life who don't give up on us let us offer respects to all the gurus in our life who don't uh, forget us and let us offer respects to all the gurus in our life who put so much effort in trying to help us grow in our spiritual journeys when we uh, offer gratitude to these personalities we realize that uh, such personalities existing in this world is great hope for this world and as we grow in our spiritual journeys we must become guru to somebody else shri, uh, shri chaitanya mahaprabhu instructed all of his disciples that go and become gurus go and become teachers becoming a guru is not about you know wearing the separate dress or being a sanyasi or anything like that becoming a guru is about teaching others about krishna teaching about others about the basic concepts of spirituality if you can teach at least one person in your life and become a guru to one person in your life you will make substantial advancement in your personal journey of life but you know thakur he says a vaishnav is someone who is recognized by how many vaishnav he makes so the more more number of vaishnavs you make in your life the more powerful you are yourself as a vaishnav the more please the lord is with you so let us all not just learn from our gurus and be grateful to our gurus but also let us try to become gurus and inspire others by teaching them what we have learned from our own teachers thank you very much i would like to give a very small uh, information and message to all of you before i end uh next morning program that we are having wednesday is the most auspicious day of ashadi kadasi the kadasi is already auspicious ashadi kadasi is even more auspicious on ashadi kadasi day i am going to do a very special lecture at the end of our morning program on uh, lord vithal and pandurpur dham and to karam maharaj so i would highly urge all of you all please attend this small satsang that we are going to have on wednesday morning after the morning uh, after the japa session is over where i am going to tell you all so many stories uh, connected to pandurpur dham and connected to the concept of ashadi kadasi so please take advantage of this particular uh, uh, session that will happen uh, live in the morning program on wednesday and you can invite as many of your friends and family as you want to be a part of this uh, and i really highly urge all of you all to be a part of these morning programs many many people who have been attending this morning program have been telling me how much they have benefited by the chanting sessions together and how much they've been benefiting by the morning program uh, and the inspiration that is being given here so please do take this morning program seriously and uh, uh, regularly be a part of this uh, morning sessions thank you very much and i'll see you all on wednesday on the auspicious day of asha dekalsi and for all those of you all who are chanting already 16 rounds please do many more rounds on asha dekalsi and for those who are not chanting 16 rounds at least on the day of asha dekalsi please chant 16 rounds and take the benefit of the most auspicious uh, day of, uh, of asha dekalsi thank you very much hari krishna